Hi there. In this video, we are going to see how can we set up GraphQL APIs into Postman. So Postman, as you know, can work, you can work on RESTful APIs. You can also work on SOAP-based APIs, right? You can also set up your GraphQL APIs into Postman. All right, so before we move on, so what what, what is Graph? QL. So GraphQL is nothing. QL stands for query language. So GraphQL is a query language for your APIs, right? And it's a, it's a specification and its implementation is available into different programming languages like ASP.NET, Java, you know, uh, JavaScript as well. So basically, how is it different from REST API? So in REST API, we have been in this video series, I've been working on uh, one collection that is animals right and I, I was working on my uh, api application which is running on my local host right so therein you know we have an endpoint for animals okay and what happens is when i hit an endpoint what i'm saying is essentially is provide me all the information about that resource okay and for every resource i have a separate you know endpoint so but in case of graphql graphql exposes a single endpoint or route for the entire application regardless of its response or actions the second major difference is http post is the only http verb recommended by graphql right but in case of rest api we have all those get put post patch delete okay so third difference is client applications you know can give instruction to graphql api about you know what type of properties to be returned in the response but in case of rest api you hit the endpoint and you get the whole json document back in your response but what if you just want to access only two properties from that complete response not possible with rest apis right so graphql provides that feature as well okay so let's do one thing uh, for practice purpose postman has provided a spotify graphql so spotify is what spotify is a music streaming app okay and if you want to read more about querying with graphql in postman again you know by now you know that there's a learning center right and just query uh, here graphql and you would see this page okay so how can we get access to that spotify graphql api so for that what you have to do is you have to click on new and here you have to write graphql and hit search Click on this working with GraphQL. In, click on this run in Postman. And a collection is loaded for you. Click on the fourth request, which is built in support for GraphQL. As you could see that Spotify GraphQL, right? And there's a body. So this is how we send the body. Uh, remember, you have to select this GraphQL. Okay. And what we have to do next is Click on this, scroll down slightly, and you would see the schema. Copy that schema because we are going to put it into the APIs. We are going to save this schema so that later on, when we have to write the query, right, we'll get the auto completion option. To enable that, you have to copy this to your clipboard, collapse this. Courier APIs, click on new API, give it a name Spotify. Version, let's say 0 0.1. And here you have to select GraphQL and GraphQL schema definition language. Okay, you can also export it from external file, but in our case, it's there in the clipboard. Click on create APIs. Close this. Go to definition. Remove this default stuff and paste in your schema. Click on save button. 
go back to your request okay and here essentially what we are doing is as you could see so we are supplying a variable artist to this query and based on that what we see in the response would be name image and the album of that artist okay so this syntax by now you must be familiar of we are fetching this from either environment or global or collection variable all right so let's do one thing let's create an environment and call it Spotify and give it the name artist and we say Sonu Nigam okay a famous uh, singer from India click on add close it select your environment Spotify run your query and check the response all right so you see Sonu Nigam and all the albums of Sonu Nigam okay so let's make a change let's change this value to another singer from India only and this time I'll say Tanjit Update, close it, click on send, and now you see all the albums from LG. Now, let's say you want to add some more thing in here. So, let's check what do we have in our schema, right? So, we have the image tag as well. So, to this album, now here's the album, and in the album, we also have the image property so let's add that as well in our test and hit the send button again in the album now we see this image click on that hit the send button so this is what we get in the response okay so this is one way so we can control what data we want to show so we can we added image and then only we see that and if we uh, you know we can take this image out and add something else from here right and accordingly our response would be updated okay so that is one thing all right so now I'll switch on to my application that I've created because I would like to show you one more advantage that this GraphQL has over uh, normal REST API and in this what you see is so these are the two types that i've created course type and player type right so in a normal rest api right you can hit this course uh, let's say endpoint and then you'll get the data back for course you want to hit player right so then you'll get the data back for player but what if in a single request you want to retrieve the data for both these endpoints is it possible in graphql of course that's the another advantage we have so what for that what i'll do is i'll switch to another workspace and i'll go to collection and close everything in here now I can save that so let me close this as well so now this is my collection and in that first I'll show you so if I use this in the body so what I'm doing is and uh, let me also show you the um, so this is the GraphQL uh, schema in this particular case so you could see that you know one is the player the other one is a course and both of these are inside this one schema right and you see that these are the fields available for players and these are the uh, you know uh, properties or fields available for courses okay so this is what we have in here and go to the collection close this out right and let's hit the player first okay so when you click on this so this is what we get in the response right this is a, this is, these players are from indian cricket team all right now 
uh, how can I control that? Oh, I close that. All right. So for that, uh, let's say now I want to check out this value as well. So all I have to do is come here and add that. And then, so you see the, the plain rule as well now. Okay. Same is the case with uh, courses as well. So this is a courses one. So I click on send. So these are all the courses available. Right. And currently we are seeing a uh, course code, course name and trainer. Let's see what do we have in the schema. And we can also, let's say this time I want to also see duration. So all we can do is go to the body and add the duration. Hit the send button. And you see the duration as well now. Okay. So this is how we can work on GraphQL APIs in Postman and you don't need to have this application which I created for, for myself. You can simply use the collection provided, uh, Spotify collection provided by Postman. All right. So this is about GraphQL in Postman. Thank you so much.